Hey up YouTube, <laughs> how are we all doing today? Welcome back to another video on the channel. And, ooh, a while ago now, yeah, four months, woohoo, before I went to Iceland and caught COVID and felt horrible. Um, I put this video up about um, Darktable's Epic HDR Photo Merge. And I did say, and I've had many requests uh, both on and off YouTube for the follow-up video. But I did say in that video I was going to produce a YouTube um, show for you on how to actually process within Darktable um, these HDR photo merges. Um, I need to go into a little bit more depth uh, because photo merges, um, or should I should say exposure merges, have got an Achilles heel, and that is movement, yeah, in the scene. So what we're going to do is basically um, to avoid the video taking forever. Um, there is another video I did down here somewhere. I where is it oh gosh it's all to do with quantitative and qualitative adjustments and I can't see but it, it, it's in here somewhere and if we um, actually come back into dark table you can see we've got exposure bracketed sequences that we can blend together and if you've got anything within the scene that moves, you're going to get ghosting and artifact as the exposures are merged together. Sometimes it works, uh, other times it doesn't, but in the t occasions where it doesn't, programs like Photoshop and I suppose GIMP will allow you to get round a certain amount of those problems. So uh, what we're going to do is look at these different exposure bracketed sequences and see whether they work or not, okay? And how to actually do the quantitative adjustments to make everything fit together into the, uh, what is for most of us, a standard dynamic range um, workflow uh, because we haven't all got HDR monitors um, because we can't really afford decent ones um, so uh, there you go so uh, just by bracketing uh, this sequence together for instance we can come up with this and the big problem is the artifacts in the sky because these lower level clouds are moving um, but the massive benefit is this uh, if i go into here we have got absolutely no noise in the shadows okay so hdr merge quantitative adjustment processing inside of dark table are you ready yep well let's do it Okay, so if I come back to the light table again, and first thing I'm going to do is to delete this image. We're going to make another one uh, shortly, but I'm just going to delete it. Okay, so we'll go, yes, delete. Okie dokie, right, so you can see we've got one sequence here that's tilted over on the side. So for expediency's sake, uh, we can just click and shift click and we can come here and we can rotate them uh, rather like that yes okay so it's caught up so let's go and start with these four images here and let's go and just simply go create hdr 
and so we can come and look at the HDR and so I come here first thing I always do uh, with an HDR inside a dark table is just go and crank up the exposure so I can see what I'm looking at and then I'll look for artifacting uh, due to movement now there is um, you'd expect no movement because it's you can see here, there's just a little tiny ripple on the water there's next to no wind but it's done at sunset and this is a totally 100% wooden building and you can tell it's a cloudless blue sky and uh, the thing about a wooden building is um, as it heats up and cools down it's constantly in motion, it twists, it expands, it contracts. And you'd think there'd be no problem. But if we go into here, you can see we've got a ghosting problem there. And you can see that the stay cable is actually dropping all the time as this building cools down, or it might be tensioning, I don't know. But over the course of the exposure, um, this cable has moved. That, to me, when I couple it with the um, rather somewhat weak degree of appeal of the image, um, it's not worth bothering. Uh, well, I personally wouldn't bother to try and do anything with that image, so I'll basically scrap it. Now, what you saw there was only what you might call a subtle movement. However, if we come to this sequence of images here, so we start off with this image here at 4 seconds, then we've got one at 8 seconds, one at 15 seconds, one at 30 seconds. Okay, so we'll shift-click to select them all. And the thing you'll notice is, um, this is the um, waterfall at Godafoss in Iceland. Um, all done behind an ND filter. And so even the shortest exposure has got blurred motion in the water. And of course the water coming over the waterfall is, is just full of motion blur in all the exposures. So in actual fact... This one will work, uh, providing we haven't got too much movement in the sky. And so we'll come back to light table again, and we will then go and reselect those images, and we'll go create HDR. And so here is the HDR, and yes, if I crank up the exposure like that, um, you just forget about the sky for a minute and this blown highlight here but you can see that we could indeed extract a lot of detail over here it's all looking quite good it's looking a little bit bland because uh, it's shot with a 7200 f2.8 which is sharp uh, but not necessarily in all the corners um, we could possibly go and rescue that with Filmic. And then let's go and put a graduated filter on that exposure. And uh, just do that. And then uh, invert the mask. And uh, we can recover these highlights and play around with the exposure. Uh, maybe we don't need quite so much. Okay. Because then we can always go and put another layer of exposure on with another iteration of the exposure module so in theory this one would work let's now switch over to this next one and uh, we'll go and select all of these there we go and of course we need to go back to the light table to create the merge in the first place so we'll go create hdr and there it is, and of course that needs uh, tipping over as well. And uh, let's go and open this up. So the first thing I'll do is start with all, adding a little bit of exposure. Not too much. I don't want to 
risk any clipping up here on the uh, highlight end of the histogram. I might just go and engage filmic and leave it as it is for the minute. And then again come to uh, colour balance RGB and uh, global brilliance and we might just lift up the shadows rather like that see if the mid-tone left will work no it won't i need to bring the mid-tones down a little bit bring the highlights up a little bit just to keep some contrast in the sky and you can start to see that if i now come back to filmic and actually go in and make some changes so we'll go into options and we'll switch the contrast in the high highlights to from hard to soft and contrast in the shadows will go to safe and you just notice the shadows just lifted here and just ever so slightly might give it a few extra iterations of uh, highlight reconstruction come into reconstruction and enable it and so you can see we've got a fundamental complete turn round of um, what's going on in that image um, let's come back to colour balance RGB and see if there's anything else we can do. Um, can we now lighten up in the mid-tones a little bit? Is that going to have much effect on the rocks? I know it's having an effect on the sky, but not much on the rocks. So what we can do is we can now lift... Um, what am I doing? I'm going the wrong place there. Um, we can now lift the exposure in the rocks a little bit more and uh, you see we've still got no clipping in the highlights and we've got a little tiny gap at the end of the, uh, the shadow end of the histogram uh, so we've got no clipping in the shadows either um, we could come over here go to contrast equalizer uh, make them um, adjust a very small and just go up and probably best coming into uh, a 100% view to do this uh, rather like that and do we need to push it any more I think that'll just about do and uh, obviously there is some chromatic aberration in there and so uh, have we got chromatic aberration turned on let's just go and have a look Chromatic Aberration Raw, uh, yeah that's turned on and uh, it could possibly do with a little further tweak but then again um, the coloration of this edge here um, will be affected by contrast so it might be a good idea to take a little bit more uh, contrast out. So how could we do that? We could do that by dropping the exposure in the sky couldn't we? So uh, let's go and add another iteration of uh, exposure. And this time let's drop the exposure a little bit like that. And then we will come into a uh, simple L channel uh, for masking. And what we can now do, uh, you can stick the mask visualization on. And uh, let's remove the darker tones rather like that okay so we'll remove the darker tones from this uh, we might just give that a little bit of a feather um, akin to that and then take out the visualization of the uh, mask and you can see we've actually dropped the exposure in the sky we've got more lightness in the uh, rocks and of course again if we look in the very darkest areas of the image no noise and we can go in here and do all sorts of fancy qualitative adjustments and uh, the only quantitative adjustment left to uh, be done with this one would be and i always forget where this is gordon bennett where is it um crop exposure orientation rotate and perspective here we go and uh, all we're going to do it's a bit difficult doing it at a hundred percent magnification um, but somewhere around there and we'll just close that module down and we are straight 
uh, we might need to do a qualitative adjustment um, by just taking that sharpening off that edge there which we could do with a mask but again it's worked okay um, because fundamentally nothing was moving in any of the scene yes the sea is moving but it's been done from behind either a six stop or a ten stop neutral density filter so any waves in the uh, water have been smoothed out anyway in the longest exposure shot in other words the brightest one which would be this one here right through to the darkest shot which will be this one here okay so movement of water is not something that should ever really affect um, an exposure blend or an HDR merge inside a dark table unless the movement is being captured at a very high shutter speed. What do we mean by that? Well, let's go to light table and let's just look at this one here. Uh, this exposure blend. The uh, longest shutter speed was a 30th of a second, 60th, 100, uh, 250th and uh, 500 i missed out the other one <laughs> so but i mean at the end of the day they're all sorted we'll go create hdr and um, you'll come into the hdr uh, let's just go and give it a quick boost of exposure you see it's worked the sky's not moving all that much so it's done quite a good job um but here we've got we're going to have all sorts of artifacts uh, because movement has been arrested in virtually every frame. So this self-same patch of froth here, or foam, uh, sitting on this little semi-rock pool, uh, is in a different place for virtually every exposure. So this is an artefact that you get with um, photo merges, and um, HDR merges um, and it, it's basically ghosting now Lightroom and one or two other um, HDR blend softwares have anti-ghosting controls in them but this sort of um, level of ghosting is just way too much for anything to cope with and you'll find that the ghosting or the anti-ghosting in Lightroom can produce some really pernicious artifacts which you struggle to get rid of. Um, we could say the same with these three here. Um, let's go back to light table. Don't worry, I will get on to processing something in a minute. And uh, you know, if I go create HDR and uh, here it is and if we look at that we don't even have to uh, turn the exposure up to see that that's cocked up do we no i mean it's just a non-starter but of course with moving water in the sea in a river or moving sky in a landscape that's all big stuff yeah i'm now going to actually produce an hdr image uh, from a sequence of raw files and uh, we'll go back to light table and there is <laughs> I don't do a lot of HDR merges I don't I usually find there's one exposure within the exposure bracket that I can actually work on now the only problem uh, with that trying to get everything to fit properly in other words do all the quantity adjustments can build up noise even when you're working with images that have been shot at base iso uh, you can get some quite severe noise problems in the darker areas and uh, when we finish the uh, dng or the hdr dng when we finish working on that uh, we'll actually see how much noise that level of adjustment will put in any one of the base ISO RAW files. So I quite frequently process just one frame out the sequence. And which frame do I go? I go for the one that's got the most headroom in the highlights. 
and uh, I will process that and it will generate noise but then if I'm doing this in Lightroom I will use the Denoise AI um, to actually remove the noise and uh, if I was doing the self same thing in Raw Therapy for instance or Darktable I would quite frequently use a linear DNG uh, produced by DxO Deep Prime 3 and that would preclude the problem or any problems I was having with movement because if you've got trees that are moving um, from one frame to another if you want to process that scene you are going to have to use just one frame um, because you're just going to have too much movement in the trees for the HDR merge to cope with um, the same would go for the shot if you, even if it was in Lightroom uh, with all the uh, anti-ghosting stuff. It just wouldn't work. It would just make a mess. So, um, yeah. So, we've got this sequence of images of this scene. Here's the DNG that I've worked up. And it, it's quite simple. And you would think, because it's an interior shot of big, heavy, fixed objects, there'd be no problem. Um, but there is yeah and it's here right down here at the bottom of the image and it's this this line here is not a line in the slate um, if I go to um, this raw file here you can see what that harsh line isn't there what's causing this artifact here is the fact that this is a shaft of sunlight coming through this hole in the roof and of course the shaft of sunlight comes from the sun and the sun and here's a bit of news for you doesn't stop moving when you press the shutter button no it doesn't so every time you go and take an exposure um doesn't really matter how quick it is it's the gap in between the exposures for um, shutter lag uh, mirror lock time etc 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 plus I was with uh, my friend Jeff when I took this and me and Jeff do tend to have a bit of a natter so uh, I mean probably a few seconds between each frame being taken and uh, of course you pay the price for it because the shadow is constantly moving and uh, stops for neither man nor beast uh, nor camera nor photographic desire yeah doesn't stop moving so this is your movement artifact and um, you can't get rid of it um, unless you <laughs> use a little dodge or a little wheeze and uh, which I'm, I'll show you later if I think we've still got time because I do not want this video to get any more boring uh, with me waffling and trying to explain things than it already is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to light table and this DNG here I'm going to um, delete and so we'll send it to Zetrash rather like that. So we've got an exposure here which is um, good for all the shadow detail as you can see uh, no noise in the shadows right and we've got an exposure here um, which is good for the highlights and uh, this rather messy um, surface crust which is on this uh, concrete slab which due to the uh, bolts that are embedded into it, so take it, there used to be a big piece of machinery that sat here. And if you want to know where this is, it's a little tumble down machine shed at Dinorwick Slate Quarry, at um, the bottom of Lambarish Pass in uh, North Wales. Um, I would say Snowdonia, but I don't think that's quite politically correct anymore, and I can't think what the word should be um, so but you know that's where it is it's right on the uh, lip of the ginormous hole quarry hole up there uh, which people refer to as Australia right so 
Um, let's get on with the job and tell me waffling, eh? Um, so we'll reselect all the images and we will just go create HDR. And so there is our HDR. So what have we got applied to it by default? Um, exposure's there, but it's not turned on. Tone equalizer, crop, sigmoid, filmic, local contrast. So basically what's on. So we've got chromatic aberration on. Uh, D mosaic in is at RCD plus VNG4. Uh, I like reconstruction for the minute. Is it in paint opposed? I don't think we're going to change that. Um, input color profile, standard color matrix, working profile, linear pro photo RGB, export profile pro photo. Okie dokie, so we're good to go. And of course, first thing I'm going to do is to uh, go and turn on the exposure and let's lift the exposure up a bit so we can see what we're working with and really and truly you must keep your eyes on the histogram and uh, yeah it, it is really vital and so see if i push it much more it, it's running off the right hand side and of course if i put the clipping indicators on i uh, can see uh, we've got some highlight clipping so what we need to do is pull that back for a bit until that highlight clipping disappears and uh, there is a slight problem if you go into uh, the image you'll notice some of the clipping indicators disappear um, but it, it's it's sort of going a little bit out of control so i'm going to engage filmic before i do anything else and again we're going to come into the options and i'm going to go safe on both um, contrast in highlights and contrast in shadows um, I'm going to put six or seven uh, iterations of reconstruction on. We're going to enable the reconstruction. And uh, we're going to zoom out. Uh, we're going to come to the loop tab. Uh, we're going to take a boatload of contrast out of it. Yes, we are. Um, I want to keep some colour in the uh, highlights. So I'm going to increase the highlight saturation mix. I'm going to come back to scene. And... Uh, we're just going to move the dynamic range scaling uh, rather like that. Okay, now you can see we've got no highlight clipping, um, but you can see all these blue um, shadow clipping indicators. So we'll leave filmic as it is for a little bit. And uh, you'd think, well, Andy, are you going to do anything more with exposure? Don't know yet. Um, but I'm going to come to what is becoming <laughs> rapidly my favourite module inside a dark table, uh, which is Colour Balance RGB. And it, it really would be my favourite module if I actually knew how to use it properly because this lot sort of, yeah, I, I haven't mastered it yet. Uh, but we don't need to master it. Um, what we're going to do is just lift up the brilliance of the shadows yeah rather like that i might lift up a few of the mid-tones and i might try and lift up the highlights because i'm trying to ma i don't want the contrast to go any weaker all right but you've constantly got to be coming in and checking the image and first of all let's check to see what this adjustment has done so we'll turn it off and we'll turn it on turn it off turn it on right um we could go in here and mask this yeah um, but i don't really think we need to um because i want to try and keep things as simple as possible and uh, let's just add a little bit of contrast now yeah that's looking okay um but i might just add a little bit of global brilliance rather like that um while i'm here i'm gonna lift up the uh, mid-tones and uh, 
highlight um, chrome grading and the mid-tones and I like saturation grading because I want to keep the colour um, because when you start making these big adjustments to contrast um, you can actually um, wash away colour so uh, that's where this module really seems to sing uh, for me at any rate at any rate so now we've done that i'm going to come back here uh, let's open that exposure module um, did we have a mask on there no we haven't got a mask on there right so with that exposure module i'm going to lift the exposure up a little bit more uh, rather like that but we'll do a simple lightness uh, because l is no longer for sort of luminance or luminosity um, because that would be in the lab color space um, this is in a uh, more extensive uh, working color space and so l here is hsl which is hue saturation and lightness okay so what we're going to do is we're going to remove it from with a parametric mask we're going to remove it from the lightest tones and so let's just do a quick visualization and uh, we there we go there's the light tones the very lightest tones and uh, let's just have a quick look and uh, maybe i want to include a little bit more in the light tones uh, because we've washed a little bit too much contrast out but now uh, that's looking an awful lot better uh, in my opinion than it was and so what we're going to do is uh, close all the panels down and then what can we say uh, well, let's go into it at 100 percent and you can see as we zoom into it um all those sort of black clipping indicators well the the, the blue uh, bits which were indicating black clipping have gone away and that's because we're looking at it basically pixel for pixel on the monitor now and uh, but of course as we zoom out um we start to see um clipping indicators in the shadows which frankly aren't really there and um uh, what else could we do oh, let's go back into color um, let's go and open that color balance rgb again and let's just go and lift the global vibrant and uh, let's give a bit of a bit of a color um, in the shadows as well and lift the saturation and uh, i'm thinking that's looking slightly overcooked uh, global saturation it just needs to come back a little bit and um, let's just come in and have a look at uh, these very strong highlights you can see there's a little bit of haze so where's that haze removal let's just go in there and click haze removal and that's doing quite a good job um, but it, it, it's chucking black clipping in there again so uh, again come to the lightness and uh, we'll just remove that um, from the um, darker tones and we don't really have to uh, remove it from very many dark tones at all see if it's hard over we'll get the clipping indicators uh, but if we just move it just ever so slightly um, we'll lose the clipping indicators so that's Whew, a little bit like a clarity adjustment okie dokie so quantitatively wise quantitatively speaking uh, we're in quite a good position with this image i'm going to turn these clipping indicators off you're driving me mad uh, because they're not really there at all um we're going to come to on or uh, modules that are on white balance and I'm just going to manually white balance. I, I've given up with this as shot and then uh, colour calibration because I keep getting these differences and these little warning triangles 
popping up. I just can't be bothered. So uh, I'm just going to change the uh, white balance to around about 5.5, five, something like that. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, we'll just turn it down a little bit. Um, that's a little bit better. It's still a bit leery. Um, we might want to come back to colour color balance RGB and take some of this global saturation out of it. Uh, rather like that. And uh, that'll just about do. So, for quantity of adjustments, we've made everything sort of fit, haven't we? Uh, no two rays about that. Um, could we add a little bit of local contrast? Yes, but I want to take that out of the uh, very, very dark um, areas. You can see we're in our, we're in, in <laughs> put my teeth in, we are in a lab style colour space adjustment now. So with the luminosity, what we'll do is we'll just remove the very darkest areas and uh, we'll just slide the top slider we'll leave the bottom slider where it is or maybe just move it in a couple of points and uh, we will just remove it uh, from the very very dark areas so we've just given a little lift in the majority of the midtones and uh, a little bit of punch into the lightest tones, um, but we've removed it from the very, very dark tones in the image. And so if I come in here now and uh, go to, um, where are we? Wrong one. Here we go. Contrast equaliser. And make the adjust as small and just sort of lift. And you can see that I don't even have to take that all the way to the top. That looks a little bit overly sharp. So I'll just sort of bring it about three quarters of the way up. And for me, that is plenty sharp enough where it needs to be. And you can see we've got absolutely no noise. So what I was saying to you before, see even in that dark shadow area there, no noise. And uh, so we could go ahead and start doing quantity adjustments on this and uh, pushing this wall optically tonally pushing it further away bringing the foreground closer to lightness extra little bit of contrast on this old engine block doing all sorts of things but it's not something i'm going to do here uh, because it's just going to take forever so uh, the one thing i can do though is this and um, I can give you an idea if I go to history stack and I go copy and I go to the darkest frame in the image um, which is that one and uh, why did I do that don't know and I just go paste and then you can see what we've done is it looks pretty similar in the thumbnails doesn't it um, but if I come in here and I go in there a lot of noise in here a lot of noise and uh, in there we've got quite a bit of noise it's holding up quite well I'll, I'll i'll give it that it's holding up quite well it's not as noisy as certain um images would be and it's a level of noise that you could cope with it certainly wouldn't be uh, apparent in a print but here's the kicker if I come into here, you can see I've got no artifact here. I've got a little bit of excess green fringing, which I could very easily go and remove. Uh, but in the <laughs> in the um, HDR merge, I've got this artifact. Now, there's a lot to be said for exporting both of these images into a raster image processor and then just gradually fading in um, the foreground from uh, this shot um, needs to be readjusted with color balance so is it matched but we could paste this area 
of this image in a raster image processor into this area of the HDR photo merge. But there you go. It's, oh dear God. You usually find that if you shoot brackets, you can actually process one of those images, one of those individual um, images. You'll be able to bring the highlights down and bring the shadows up to a point where they all fit convincingly into the dynamic range of your um, your monitor in your workflow. And um, of course, the penalty for that is noise. Sometimes it can be a lot noisier than it's turned out to be in this frame here. Um, but you know, it is what it is. But overall, the benefit of doing an HDR merge is a reduction in noise and to the point where there is no... no if all the images have been shot at base ISO, um, there will be no noise in your image. Um, so there you go. So anyway, that's it. Um, all I would do now to get that out of um, dark table. Um, there's lots of different ways you could do it. I would not want to send it out as a 32-bit floating point TIFF. There's no bloody point um, because you can't do anything with it. It needs to be down in 16-bit or 8-bit. So uh, basically, I would export this as a TIFF 16-bit unsigned integer. It will go into the root uh, folder for the image into a subfolder called dark table export and uh, i'll just go export and see what happens uh, exporting one image uh, wait for it to finish and then i could uh, basically come in go to that folder which will be hdr2 there should be a folder in here dark table exported and there it is and i could right click and i could go open with I'm open with Photoshop 2024 and here's Photoshop opening up I mean I could take this straight into Lightroom but there you go and uh, uh, job's a good one it looks absolutely identical uh, in Photoshop as it does in Darktable and uh, there you go I, I quite like that I hope you do too and uh, until the next time guys stay safe stay well keep taking the pictures hope you've not all fallen asleep and uh, i'll see you very soon too root